Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm back. Um, it's been a little while. Today, I'm thinking of using Ozzy Osbourne. We're gonna do like a, a vintage like band t-shirt and apply it on a cool tie-dye t-shirt, which I feel like, you know, tie-dye has just been trending for the past three or four. I mean, it's always been cool, but like really heavily trending, especially in like the retail space. Um, so first we're gonna build the graphic and then we're gonna apply it on a tie-dye t-shirt. And I'll also sprinkle in a little info on how to like make your own CAD and like mask it on your own CAD just to make like custom uh, tie dyes. No more talking, let's just jump right into Photoshop and get it cracking hot. So for this t-shirt, we're gonna use Ozzy and I've already uh, pulled a couple images from Google. Again, I don't have the rights for these photos or I'm not selling anything. Just FYI, definitely just for the purpose of this video. I got this one, which I think is dope as hell. Um, I also have this one, which is kind of sick too. And this one, and this is the one I, I really like. I just like the facial expression and there's another element to this uh, photo, which is the cross. And it gives it a lot. I mean, just him holding it with that face is kind of sick. I think out of uh, the three, this is the more doable one. And I think I'll come up with a pretty sick graphic for this one. Let's get rid of the other ones. Just delete the two layers. Give it a black background. First thing we want to do is cut them out of the background. So make sure your image is rasterized because the quick action for remove background feature does not work when your image is a smart object. So you got to rasterize it right here. Easy. Remove background normally does a good job, but if not, we might have to go in manually. Yep. Um, we have to go in manually. I like to go to the layer and the mask and hold down control and disable the layer mask because you want to see what you're doing and cutting out. So I like to go to my uh, quick selection tool and that's up here. Looks like this. Um, and then like just manually like drag in the cross. And then you see how like it'll select the background. All you gotta do is hold option and just like hover over it and like get rid of it and then let it go to select the image more. I think this part was cut out. Let me just select a little bit over here. I think we're good. So I made that selection. So now what I wanna do is go back to the mask, hold control and enable the layer mask. So just press B on the keyboard for the quick command uh, for the brush tool and then just start brushing it in. I think this is pretty good for what we're doing. It's not the best cutout, but it's all right, it'll do. Now the next step is to treat the photo. I kind of want to give it like a posterized effect to it. So you can go to camera raw and do it that way. I feel like uh, this time I'm just gonna use like overlays, uh, blending modes. So just uh, copy that layer. Start messing with the blending modes. That's kind of sick when you're like, but that's the kind of effect that we're gonna get to. Let's just start with overlay. I just want a little bit more control. Overlay is good. So you wanna make a copy of that layer. Make sure you're on the layer, but on the image side and hit Command I to invert it. And let's just make the blend mode normal so you can see that the image is inverted. But I think I want a color burn on this blending mode. Color burn, yeah, color burn is what I want. Pretty sick. Let's see where we're at. Let's just see what we've done so far. There you go. It just gives it, just treats it a little better. Look at the wood, the wood grain is sick right here. Uh, we still got a little bit more to do. So now I just want to go back to the original layer, the first layer, copy that again, right? Convert it to a smart filter. Hit okay. Go to filter gallery, yeah, filter gallery. We want to apply poster edges, so go to our, make sure you're on artistic, that artistic folder there, and then go to poster edges, hit that. Oh, need this, just get rid of this right here. And the settings, it depends on what you're going for, but I feel like I don't want to apply too much of this effect. So just one across for me, it's uh, the edge thickness is one, the edge intensity is one, and the posterization is one. So I'm gonna hit okay. There you go. And then I think I wanna give that layer 
A soft light? Yeah, soft light. That's cool. All right, let's go back all the way to the top layer, the inverted layer. Now go to your adjustment layers and add a curves adjustment layer. We're not gonna do anything to it yet, but uh, we'll get there. So now uh, next you wanna add an, another adjustment layer and that would be posterize on. Make sure you have the levels on four for posterize. Let's go back to the curves. We're gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. You see what will happen, like the shading will start changing once you start messing with the curves. You see that and see what's going on there. So like, I just feel like, you know, I just like to control the shading a little bit, you know, just adding the curves adjustment layer. So see what is, see what's happening. Like you see the hot spots, like the white, like I don't want too much of that. Like, see, I can go like crazy or just keep it like really subtle like that. Cause you know, some cool highlights to make this pop a little bit. All right. And the shading, the mid tones, uh, I don't want too much of that. Okay, all right, let me see. Zoom out a little bit. That looks pretty sick. Let me see. Let me add a little bit more highlights though. All right, so let's see what we have done so far. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put all these layers except the original layer on the folder. Just, just to see what we're doing, just to click it on and off. Yeah, that's a that's a dramatic like change. It's pretty dope. I love the hair. Look, let me zoom up on the hair. It's, it's cool. And the, the grain on the cross is kind of dope too. Yep. All right, so that's what I want. And that's what I got. So I thought of putting like a tombstone behind them. And to build my shapes, you know, I like to go to Illustrator. Just get, I just feel like you get cleaner shapes and type and stuff like that. So I'm in Illustrator and to build a quick tombstone shape, it's just it's using a rectangle shape. Flip it. You want to select just the top part. Okay, and, then, and now drag this little node down just to get that shape. Bam. So that looks good. Maybe a little bit shorter. Well, that's our shape right there. So we just want to copy it. Go back into Photoshop. So paste, smart object. Boom. Make sure it's behind that. Uh, see, I feel like it's too tall, but that's easy. Just go back into the smart object. Make sure you double click. It'll take you back into Illustrator and just bring it up more. It's good. Save. Go back into Photoshop. And there you go. I think that that works. That's kind of cool. The next step is to give it a stone effect. You can easily just go and, and get like a stone texture, like on Google, go to uns Unsplash and try to find like a stone or concrete wall texture and just kind of mask it over it. In this case, I think I'm gonna use a preset that I uh, designed and it will be available on fullermode.com on a preset 15 style preset pack that me and Fuller collabed on. So definitely look out for that one. It was a fun pack to work on. Be sick, I hope y'all like it. So. To apply that style, I'm just gonna go to blending options and have my styles saved here. All right. Uh, it's this one right here on that pack. And bam. So I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and I wanna go to FX right here on the corner, little icon, hold down control, scroll all the way down to scale effects and then bring it down. See, it, it, it's at 100% right now, but I want it maybe at like 85% or 80, no, let's try 80%. Hit that. Did it do anything? No. It'll go a little bit smaller. So go back to effects, scale effects. It's at 100% still. Let's try 75%. Actually, you can see it. All right. Nah, maybe like 60%. Yeah, 60% looks legit. All right, I'm gonna hit OK. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty fuego, man. That's pretty fire right there. Now I just wanna uh, take Ozzy and maybe add like a drop shadow. Oh, that's too harsh. But look, it definitely needs a drop shadow. That looks fire. Maybe the tombstone, tombstone need to be a little bit smaller, just a tad, just because I want that little piece to creep out. There you go. What y'all think? That I think that that's legit right there. So, typeface. Uh, let's go with um. 
ITC Serif, maybe. Make sure my swatch is white for the type. And I might just apply the same stone effect to that, the type. So uh, I gotta mess with the kerning. Bam. So let's bring it up a little bit. Uh, ITC Serif, that's what I said. All right. ITC Serif Gothic. Yep. That's my type right there. And it's too big, so let's bring it down. Maybe we want to mess with the height a little bit. So let's just go here. Bring it up a little bit. 15, 115. Yep. That's cool. I see how I have the type and the tombstone behind the image. It'll apply the posterized all throughout the graphic. All right, so now to apply the same effect that I applied on the tombstone to the to the type, I'm gonna go to the tombstone layer and I'm gonna just click on the effects, hold option, click and drag to the type layer, let it go, and it'll apply the same effect to it. And then right away we can see that the scale is too big for the type. So we're gonna have to do the same thing. Just make sure we're on the type uh, layer. Go to effects right here in the little corner. Hold down control, go to scale effects and bring it down to like 60, maybe. Uh, maybe more, 50. Oh, maybe more, 40. We'll go back up a little bit. Uh, maybe 35, why not? Yes, that looks legit. Bam. So I pulled this chain and I want to remove the background. I want to rasterize that layer. Uh, remove background. Quick action, remove background. Okay. So, I mean, there's little parts here that I might have to, I'm going manually. So I'm going to just hit the, let me use the wand for this one. Yep. Make sure I'm on the mask. B for the brush tool. Do the same thing to the bottom. All right, lit. There you go. I feel like I might have to put this. Yeah, I might have to put this one all the way up top, like on top of everything, even the effect, because the effect was kind of like making it, the edges disappear a little bit. So we're just going to have to apply a different overlay on this. So. But, I mean, let's just copy that layer and maybe go to overlay. See, it darkens it up a little, gives it a little bit more. Screen, color dodge maybe? Yeah, color dodge, let's try that. Oh, let's make Ozzy bigger. Let's make the type bigger. You know? Let's select both of the chain layers and convert them into a smart filter. Hit okay. All right, so I'm good with this. Maybe play with the levels a little bit. Command L on that layer. So I think it's money. This is money right here. This is good. I kind of wish it was bigger to cross, but let's see. The tab bigger. And then let's give it a drop shadow. I think. And that really kind of makes it pop, pop out a little bit better. And now I'll give it a mask. Because so I want to like kind of just bring these like so it can look a little bit more natural on the O. Oh. Bread right there, bread. Maybe, let's save one. Maybe we could add Osborne on the bottom. Ben Gwait, maybe medium condensed will work better. Yeah, yeah, that's better. A little bit taller, so. Yo, my allergies been killing me, man. Anybody else? It's like, it just ruins my day. Honestly, like, I get it really bad. But this is it. I think this looks good. So I think about this one. So now let's put this on a t-shirt, tie-dye t-shirt like that. And pull my cat. So for the cat, right? What I did, I just went online. I couldn't find a good tie-dye mock-up. That was why it fit like this and cool. So when that happens, I just kind of like just uh, Frankenstein something. So I pulled this uh, spider tie-dye uh, mock-up. 
and just pretty much overlaid it on my CAD and used the blending mode divide and just like, and I just masked it. And then just, I'll move it around just to place it better. You know, make it bigger, make it smaller. I think this works. Save that. So that's what I did with the CAD. This is what I came up with, with the little, you know, adding a black and white adjustment layer to it and added a cool background to it. Now let's apply the graphic. So make sure you select all your layers. I like to convert it to a smart filter. Just want to apply it, bring down the opacity just to make it a little bit more natural to 90 maybe. Let me go back to the smart object when I feel like I missed something. So I'm just going to hit that. My favorite thing is a color lookup just to give it like a more evened out tone. And I think this one is it right here. Just hit save. Go back to my CAD. Let me see what it did. Yeah, I just feel like it just evens it out a little bit better. Maybe the tombstone is just too high, sitting too high. So let me go back and change that. Okay, drag it down. Save. That's the cool thing about smart objects. Even when you're catting, you could just go back and make quick changes. Uh, maybe the Aussie's sitting too high again. You know, look, all, always looks different when you cat it. You're gonna have to make some adjustments. This should be it, bam. Hit save, go back. And to top it off, add a cool background to your cat page like this. Maybe just add a shadow to the CAD. Yep. Like that to make it like stand out a little bit more. Bam. Yo, let's make t-shirts. Let's make t-shirts. There you go, tie-dye. There goes your tie-dye band t-shirt. I hope y'all like this video. You know, if you like this type of content, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Please share. And please look out for that Styles pack. Definitely appreciate it. Tie-dye band t-shirt. There'll be more coming. Peace.